All right, let's update our test coverage. So like last time, let's start by testing for coverage to see where we stand. So Python manage.py. Okay, so as you can see, we're at 39%. And let's go ahead and look at this in finer detail by opening the coverage index.html file. So first, let's go ahead and omit the under under init.py file since we don't need to test it. And to do that, we can just update the management command in manage.py. So we can say omit and under under init. All right. Perfect. So let's go ahead and test again. And now we're at 46%. So let's head back to the coverage file. Let's re refresh that. How about we take a look at the home views here? And if we scroll down here, how about we go ahead and add a test for submitting a new blog post, which you can tell from the coverage file that it needs to be tested since the lines are highlighted in red here. And to save time, I'm going to go ahead and grab the code from the repository. So discover flask, tests, and testblog.py. So here is the test. So we're, we'll refactor this in a minute, but let's go ahead and just add this to our testfunctional.py file. So we created a new class to hold all the tests associated with blog posts. Of course, it's called blog post tests. And then we added a new function to log the user in and then add a new post. And then finally, we tested the response to ensure that we get a 200 success code back along with the correct flash message. And let's go ahead and test coverage again. So you can see we're at 52% now. So next, let's take a look at the users view. And so let's go ahead and, and test to ensure that errors are thrown during an incorrect registration. And again, I'm gonna grab this code from the repository Copy and paste this. And I need to go ahead and add an import here. So from Flask, import request. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that out. Okay, so I'm getting an error here. Let's see what's going on. Okay, so it looks like we need to put the forward slash back there. And let's I'll go ahead and update that as well. Okay, let's test this again. All right, cool, we're at 54% now. And in this test, we're really just trying to register an invalid email and then testing to make sure the correct error message is thrown. Also with coverage, we can exclude lines that we don't need to test for. So for example, we can exclude like the imports. And to exclude lines, we just want to use the following comment. And then the no cover. So that'll exclude it from coverage. We can also do the same thing to blueprints there. So now if we test this out, our coverage should have increased. So we're at 57% now. 
So I'll let you go ahead and exclude the imports and blueprints since we don't really need to test for those. So go ahead and, and pause the video and do that now. Okay, so I excluded all the imports and then the blueprints and did that in the users and also home view. So if we run coverage now, we are at 61%. Awesome. Okay, so let's refactor our test suite one last time. So let's go into tests. Let's go ahead and delete out the test form file. And then let's create a test blog.py file. And then a test basic.py file. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and rename the test models to test users. So within test basic, let me go ahead and remove blog posts. And then also I'll go ahead and move this over to our test users. All right. So we don't need that. Okay, so test basic is done. And then within the test blog, I just want to keep the blog post test. So go ahead and remove the users and then our base the test there. And we can get rid of that there. Cool. So let me just rename this here. So that's blog. That's users. This is basic. And let's run the test coverage one last time just to make sure we didn't break anything. So last time we were at 61%. Cool. So that's it for testing for now. And if you see anything that needs to be refactored, please comment below. So next time we're going to convert our code to Python 3. All right, thanks for watching.